The Analects of Confucius Book 1 Wisdom Through the Ages Welcome to the reading to the Analects of Confucius Book 1 by Confucius. I am Chloe, I will be reading today. You are about to embark into a wisdom journey. First I will guide you into a deep state of relaxation, where you will experience a wonderful calmness and meditative state of mind. This time is for you, and you alone. Get into a nice comfortable position. I will start by giving you a little biography of Confucius. Then I will start reading his book and pause to give you time to ponder on what he said. I will read Book 1. Confucius was an influential Chinese philosopher, teacher and political figure known for his popular aphorisms and for his models of social interaction. Confucius, also known as Kong Qi or Kung Fu Zhu, was a Chinese philosopher, teacher and political figure. His teachings, preserved in the Analects, focused on creating ethical models of family and public interaction and setting educational standards. After his death, Confucius became the official imperial philosophy of China, which was extremely influential during the Han. Tang and Song dynasties. Confucius was born probably in 551 BC, lunar calendar, in present-day Kfu, Shandong province, China. Little is known of Confucius' childhood. Records of the historian written by Shima Chen, born 145 BC, died 86 BC, offers the most detailed account of Confucius' life. However, some contemporary historians are skeptical as to the record's accuracy, regarding it as myth, not fact. According to records of the historian, Confucius was born into a royal family of the Chou dynasty, other accounts describe him as being born into poverty. What is undisputed about Confucius' life is that he existed during a time of ideological crisis in China. The master said, studying, and from time to time going over what you've learned that's enjoyable, isn't it? To have a friend come from a long way off that's a pleasure, isn't it? Others don't understand him, but he doesn't resent it that's the true gentleman, isn't it? Master Yu said, a man filial to his parents, a good brother, 
get apt to go against his superiors few are like that. The man who doesn't like to go against his superiors but likes to plot rebellion no such kind exists. The gentleman operates at the root. When the root is firm, then the way may proceed. Filial and brotherly conduct these are the root of humaneness, are they not? The master said, clever words and a pleasing countenance little humaneness there. Master Zung said, each day I examine myself on three matters. In making plans for others, am I being loyal to them? In my dealings with friends, am I being trustworthy? Am I passing on to others what I have not carefully thought about myself? The master said, guiding a state of a thousand chariots, be attentive to affairs and trustworthy, frugal in expenditures and sparing of others. Employ the common people only at proper times. The master said, young people should be filial at home, brotherly with others, circumspect, and trustworthy. Let them act kindly toward the populace in general and befriend those of humane character. If after that, they have energy left over, let them study the arts. Zixia said, if he treats worthy persons as worthy and is respectful to them, does all in his power to serve his father and mother, gives his best in the service of the ruler, and in dealings with friends is faithful to his word, though some may say he lacks learning, I would surely call him learned. The master said, if the gentleman lacks gravity, he won't command respect. If he studies he will avoid narrow-mindedness. Put prime value on loyalty and trustworthiness, have no friends who are not your equal, and, if you make mistakes, don't be afraid to correct them. Master Zung said, tend carefully to death rites, and pay reverence to those long departed, and the people will in the end be rich in virtue.
Zikin questioned Zigong, saying, when the master goes to a particular state, he is certain to learn about its government. Does he seek such information? Or do others just give it to him? Zigong said, the master goes about it by being cordial, forthright, respectful, modest, and deferential. The master's way of seeking is different from that of others. The master said, while his father is alive, observe his intentions. After his father is dead, observe his actions. If after three years he hasn't changed his father's way of doing things, then you can call him filial. Master Yu said, what ritual values most is harmony. The way of the former kings was truly admirable in this respect. But if in matters great and small one proceeds in this manner, the results may not always be satisfactory. You may understand the ideal of harmony and work for it, but if you do not employ ritual to regulate the proceedings, things will not go well. Master Yu said, trustworthiness is close to rightness it ensures that people will live up to their word. Courtesy is close to ritual decorum it ensures that people will give wide birth to shame and disgrace. When one makes no mistakes in what he favors, he can serve as a leader. The master said, a gentleman when he eats doesn't try to stuff himself, when he chooses a dwelling is not overly concerned about comfort. He is attentive to affairs, careful of his words, and looks to those who have the way to correct himself. He is the kind who can be called a lover of learning. Zigong said, poor but free of obsequiousness, rich but free of arrogance how would that do? The master said, all right. But not as good as poor but happy in the way, rich but a lover of rights. Zigong said, when the ode says, as something cut, something filed, something ground, something polished is that what it's talking about? The master said, see, Zigong, now I can begin to talk to you about the odes. Someone tells you the first step, and you understand the step that comes after. The master said, 
Don't worry about whether other people understand you. Worry about whether you understand other people. I am going to count from 1 to 5 now and with each word I say, you will become more and more aware of the present moment, and ready to go about your day. I will continue to read the book in the next part. One. Coming back now. Two. Bringing back the memory of nature with you. Three. Feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. Four. Feeling stress-free and ready to achieve anything. And five. Welcome back and enjoy the rest of your day.